<laughs> without <laughs> um without going into the mold aspect of it, what did everyone think when Ethan f- fucking died? I was like, like Miranda just rips out his it. arm. Um, I'm like, we're doing it. Ethan's gone. Let's go. <laughs> I, I just fucking, they just did it. They just went for it. I was like, like, like okay. Part of me felt like they were gonna they were gonna kill him off like really early in the story, and, like literally just the rest of the game you'd be playing as Chris. Um so I felt like semi right when that happened. I'm like, oh cool, now we're playing as Chris, we're gunning dudes down, we have so he much ammo, it's a ridiculous. One man army. And I'm and like back, yo. He can't grow his fingers back, but he can grow a whole fucking heart back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like fucking the mole. No, apparently he he didn't have a heart. Oh, the entire time? He did not have a heart. That entire time after he was killed, the mold just brought him back up. They're like, all right, man, can I go? But They're like, we don't have time to build but, you a heart. But, but, let's go back into that part. What did you guys think of the, the plot revelation that um, Ethan, Ethan, the mold di- Ethan died back in Resi Ulsa no, no, as I soon as Jack it. punched him? I oh. called it. Because oh. there was always a fan theory that e- that something wasn't right with Ethan during all of Resident Evil Seven, because he's able to like reattach his leg, he's like able to to, to like get his hand reattached to- totally fine. There was always that fan theory that something wasn't right. The main theory mm-hmm. was that he what was that he he was infected, and the, originally fans believed that he got infected when he was going through the water at the beginning of Resident Evil Seven, and the body popped up and he fell back, so he like ingested some of it. That was the fan theory, but the fact that he just fucking died, <laughs> and also yeah, that to, Mia to... fucked the mold man. I'm sorry, I can't get over this. Like she knew he was a mold man too, and she just did it. To, I mean, good um, for her, but like, <laughs> um, I, I, so to go back on that part was with <laughs> um, with the theories and whatnot. It, it, like, and and I think admittedly everyone here w- would was giving it uh, leeway or credence that like. Because, like, in all the Resident Evil games, like, a zombie bite bites you, you're, you're going to turn no matter what. But in, when you're the protagonist, you have the power to spray yourself and all your boo-boos and are magically gone. So, so there, were, there was some credence just like, yeah, this makes sense. But, like, going back to 7, you're like, oh, yeah, you're able to, like, reattach your leg when it gets shoveled off. And it, even <laughs> in a retrospective part, it makes um, Zoe's and Lucas's perspectives a lot more valid for how they're able to stave it off. Um. I'm really interested to like maybe even replay through seven specifically so I can be like, oh no, yeah, Lucas is basically mold, so is Zoe. It's it's they're they're they are basically one in the same with uh in, in Ethan's shoes. And also um, like bring, bringing back Evelyn was a lot of fun too. Like I wasn't expecting her to come back. Oh, yeah, that was, the fact that was they're like, oh, she's been living in Ethan's head because of all the mold and stuff. Like I'm like interested. Yeah, her consciousness is still hmm. there. And then also like, I think that revelation that revelation just shattered my heart. Cause I was just like, you know, uh, poor Ethan, you know, he just, he, he just, <laughs> this whole time, this he's whole time, dead. <laughs> he's, been dead. he's just, and, and, and the only reason he's alive, alive is because the mold and like, um, but, but then that, so then that goes into the whole, like um, the ship of Theseus thing. Like, is he still really Ethan? Is he still orig- the original Ethan or is he, a completely different Ethan who th- that, you know, he does, he think that he's Ethan because his consciousness is there. You I know, like the, you know what I'm saying? I like the part where the second Ethan bursts through the window and they're floating in the building, discussing philosophy. <laughs> I mean, I will say <laughs> that, that, oh Jesus, that the hinting at, Something not being right about Ethan Deering Resident Evil 8 was some of the coolest damn shit, especially with Lady Lady Demetres saying that his blood was stale. Mm-hmm. Where when you pick up his hand and you turn his hand around, you can just see the mold in his blood. Like there, like there's such cool little like hints hints at stuff that I I did not catch the hand. I did not mm-hmm. catch the Lady Demetres comment my like first time going, and then it all hit me, and I was like, "Holy fuck!" They've yep. been hitting with this the entire fucking game. So it's funny because before the game, before I played the game, I just I thought of that too. I was like, "Why is Ethan able to heal or whatever like so easily? That's so or crazy." Evil magic. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I thought because I was like, "Oh well, you know, technically they live in a parallel reality." where medicine is so advanced that you literally can just regenerate. Mm-hmm. You know, and, it, it, and I, it's, so that's what I chalked it up to, that it was just science. 
Um, it's just protagonist power. He's got bit by a zombie, incurable. Just spray yourself. You're good. By doing that, by actually adding a reason to why the protagonist can heal as well as he does, it really uh, subdued our expectation of what the main character can do. Because instead of like, oh, they're just surviving because health items, you know, they actually narratively made it a reason for why he can heal, you know? Mm -hmm. so oh we totally missed this part i thought it was incredibly fucking morbid when um once once you get beat uh lady demetresque you get the vial and then it just dawns upon you just like your child is in these four literally different flasks it's her body parts and like and like there's there's two options here there's one it's literally like her <laughs> cut off body parts in these jars like her head just floating it is. Or, it is. or is it or is it like dissolved like they, they fucking melted your baby down and put her in jars like either option isn't great it's pretty it's incredibly morbid. dark it's, it's incredibly dark for resident evil standards yeah. <laughs> I mean, crystal it's a crystallized baby snapped into four baby. yeah it's, it's so, so um, um the the ending though with ethan dying and everything like i'm gonna be honest this is like, the fact this they never is... want to show his fucking face like hey heads up to the cameraman who just yeah. didn't show his fucking face whatsoever um like honestly this is like the most emotional resident evil's <laughs> ever been for me i'm just like damn i'm sorry that this dope is freaking dying like it's actually got to me a little bit i'm just like usually resident evil is just, it's just this um off. his yeah. voice actor went off like he did not yeah. have to go that hard yeah, Re Resident movie. Evil is like just such typically like a B action horror movie. Like nothing of like any real consequence happens to the main cast. Like you can argue like Pierce and Resident Evil Six, but he was like a side character. He wasn't like the main main cast. Um, so yeah, like having this come out of the bloom, just like damn, this is a this is a first for the series. This is like the most emotional it has been. Like with like with without a fucking doubt. Yeah, I I I was shocked that they actually were going for that and they were killing off the main character. Um, but at the same time, I understand because um, I don't think they really had any intention of. I, I Well, actually, I don't know what their intention is by doing that, but I, I will say that um, it, it was, it was definitely a, a different move than, than Capcom has made in the past by killing off a main character. Um, and I think that, God, okay. Can I just get into like the production of like the ending in general? Because literally after the finale, after of course the obligatory Resident Evil TM uh, explosion at the end, as always, there is an explosion at, at the end of every Resident as Evil. As is tradition. As is tradition, it has to everything has to burn. Um just the the cut from the rest of the the storybook of the village of shadows and, and the final line by Mia's voice actress that's delivered to just the fade in of the end credits and the song playing is just, Oh my God. Like that in that moment, when the story ended, the storybook ended and, and this, and the actual credits began, I literally sat back in my chair and I was like, wow. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> they Oh, me, like, yeah. hey, welcome, welcome back to the Resident Evil that you fucking remember. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's, it also, like, just leading into that end credit scene, which I, like, I knew there was an end end credit scene, just people who had, who had already beaten the game was like, hey, there's an end credits, like, don't skip straight to the, like, uh, results screen as you do in every Resident Evil game. Uh, Rose fucking rules. <laughs> like... So I, I like that they're kind of. I like that they're kind of pivoting her as like another Sherry Burke, and except um, with with some more explicit powers as she hints at when the yeah. uh, when the security guard or whatever is is being a little bit of a dipshit to her. But yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy that it's, it's crazy that it's like such a it's such a um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's such a uh, a time gap between the events of eight into here. Like I think she's what like seventeen or something in that ending. So, like it's gonna it's gonna be so old man Chris with a freaking cane that takes rolling place around after Resident Evil Nine. So like eight happens, then nine happens, then that scene happens. Oh really? That that that's, takes place after that, nine. That's, that's I mean that's we'll have to wait and rumor. see, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. But people are taking the fact that there's like a seventeen year time time jump. They're like, okay, something has to happen in between seventeen years. <laughs> They're I mean, like, something honest, has to happen. If I had to take a guess, I'm I'm gonna I would say that this is so far in the future that they're not even gonna touch it. 
there's, there's just going to continue to be more games. Uh, this is just going to be like the end of the timeline for but the foreseeable future. Well, I mean, it, said, I mean, I it, said Rose, it said the the father's story, story is, is over. And I, and I want. I've been waiting for this moment that we talk about this final scene because I have I have some worry because my worry is that what Capcom is doing <laughs> is by showing Rose as almost an adult, basically a teenager, is that I'm worried that they are now trying to take Resident Evil down a path of, um, of uh, what's it called? Cutting themselves off from the original characters by aging them out of the series, mm -hmm. by making them so old that they no longer can oh, really still, reasonably still be there. part of the series. I mean, Chris I, is yeah. still there because she flat out says Chris. I right, a, but I, I mean, like as like a playable character is what <laughs> I'm saying. There was a bit of a shit post I did the other day where it's like Resident Evil 14. It literally shows like the main cast, just like all like old grandpas, old grannies. It's well, just Chris like, is old already. <laughs> Chris is technically like 40, 48, 49 in fucking Resident Evil 8. Yeah, he's like, a strapping young man at 48. Man. Like, don't get me wrong. A I'm a very I'm, old man. I understand. I understand that in these kind of storylines, like people age, people have to get older. Eventually we do have to let go, go of our favorite characters. I just don't want to. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, come on. Same. Please, Leon, please do not get rid of Chris or Leon. Or Leon. Leon, ha Leon, has to Leon has to canonically fuck at some point. It has not happened okay, yet. But he's, he's it, hoping. Okay, but that scene in Resident Evil 4 when he's talking to Ada where he's like, oh no, that was in one of the movies. When he's like, oh, don't you remember we had that night in Paris? It's like, oh, come on. They totally fucked. Like, okay, come on. <laughs> like, I, let's, I can't trust let's Leon with that. Real. Like let's just let's just be real. <laughs> they totally fucked. Like I have a feeling, I have a feeling though, this is my just my prediction, is that um Resident Evil 9 is going to be in the perspective playable as um Rose uh as Rose. And um it's going to be like essentially maybe like her first mission. I'd be down for it. It'd be I mean I'll put it this way. Billy I'm not going to rank the all the games or whatever. Resident Evil 4 is my favorite fucking video game of all time and the fact that Village is a damn close second to it says says a lot. And so I I trust Capcom to do whatever the fuck they want with this franchise. I am I'm excited to do anything they do with it. And then I also I'm I'm still I'm still holding out cuz I think uh they are I think they do have Resident Evil Revelations 3 on the do lit on the to-do list. Room the um, uh, I think that Switch Resident Evil 9 is going to be Chris going against the BSAA, though. Because he didn't say, that, we're yeah. on our, we're, like, oh, we, we, we have to go to the European branch of the BSAA. I feel like that's what 9's going, going I, to I be. I feel like, 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 if I had to take a guess, <laughs> I'm going to say that's that's going to be, like, DLC. Kind of like that the same vein that DLC, they did with... Or that um, could be a side title. Yeah, like, in the same vein for what they did for Not a Hero. Make right. it free. I mean, I will still pay, That'd but make cool. it free. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm also curious. Is like, are they? Do they have any plans for DLC? Because with Resident Evil Seven, they just straight out said like, "Oh, there's like, you know, there's a season pass you can get with the game, and that unlocks all the DLC when it, as it comes out." But for this one, it doesn't seem like there's very much DLC beyond uh, Mercenaries mode. I'm I'm very surprised that Resident Evil. Two Two and three remake didn't have. There, there was some free stuff for um, Resident Evil Two. They had like some challenge runs or whatever. But in terms yeah, of like, like yeah, but in terms of like a, an extended or or like a standalone little campaign, like regardless of length or whatever, I'm surprised uh, the two and three remakes didn't have anything like that because seven got a lot of DLC and it was a it was a big variety of DLC different. Don't types. remind me of the fucking poker one. Oh, I fucking hated that DLC. <laughs> I don't play Resident Evil Seven to play poker. Like, you know. Oh, to, um, oh, one thing I wanted yeah. to say. You know what? You know what? Uh, I did miss from from Resident Evil Four that they didn't put in in this game uh, is the merchant's shooting range. Oh, for the for the bottle caps. For the bottle caps, the figurines and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> that that trophy was a pain in the ass. I I'm I'm good. 